Hello friends and welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you are new here, my name is Amy. I upload videos every single Thursday and I would love it if you subscribe down below. For today's video, I thought I would recreate one of my first serious makeup tutorials here on this channel. I didn't include anything in the video. I, like I'm not, I'm not watching the video and creating it, I'm just recreating the look. Anyways, um, here is a photo of said look, and I hope I have improved since. Um, so yeah, without further ado, if you'd like to see how I created this cranberry smoky eye for the fall, then just keep on watching. So starting with the ABH eye primer, I am just going to apply this to my eyelids using a Sigma Concealer F75 brush just to lay it down and carve out my brows. My brows have definitely come a long way since I first filmed that tutorial. I'm also bringing the primer to the inner corner of my eye just to cancel out any darkness. Since I'm working with black, I want to make sure that I'm trying to cancel out as much darkness as I can as it will really enhance, especially in the inner corner, the darkness. And I'm creating a wing out with the concealer. All right, taking a Luxie 250 large eye blending brush. I'm actually just using this to pat in the concealer so it dries and to kind of blend it out onto my skin. I was using a beauty blender for a bit but I tried this today and it actually creates a better base for the eyeshadow. It doesn't dry it out nearly as much and I'm just dabbing it really. I'm sorry if I sound nasally there's a really bad cold going around at work and I'm not excited to catch it because I'm I'm going to LA in two weeks and then I'm going to Seattle in two months. <sighs> or no, it's less than two months now. It's a month and a half away for me to go to Seattle. So really don't want to get sick. So today we are using, oh wow, that really threw my contrast off. There we go. Today we are using the Jaclyn Hill palette. Ta -da! I haven't used this palette in a really long time. So I thought, well, what a great reason to revisit it since I did use it for the eye look that I'm recreating today. So I have the first round of palettes, so none of them had names on the back or anything. So I took a label maker and I printed off the names and I labeled them all so I could name off the names to create tutorials. This palette was my first creative palette that I've ever purchased. So it holds near and dear to my heart. I don't think I'd ever be able to throw it out unless I used up all the shades. I know it's still available, so technically I could buy one that's not expired, but what's the fun in that? This is the original packaging, the OG packaging. <laughs> So first I'm gonna be taking a Lexi eye shading brush and I'm going to dip it into mocha. I'm just gonna pat out any creasing that may have happened and then lay it down. I think in my original tutorial, I actually did lightest to darkest, but now the times have changed and I do darkest to lightest. Anyways, I'm just patting mocha down. It doesn't matter if you get it down here because I'm gonna clean it up later, just like that. Now I'm going to use my Morphe M433 brush and I'm gonna dip into the shade Pooter. I know I kind of screwed up with the colors that I originally used because in my original picture I used more warm tones. I could have watched the tutorial, but I didn't. Um, so I really don't know what shades I used. <laughs> so I'm just making it up as I go. But anyways, I am dipping Mocha out with dipping. Did I just say that? I am blending mocha out with pooter to create a diffused smoky effect. I'm gonna drag it out a little bit to create a wing. How's the coloring on my videos now? I did something to the color correction for my videos. I didn't know I could do that in my camera. So I'm hoping maybe that the picture looks better. I'm not too sure. Is it too warm? Is it too red? Let me know, please. Give me some feedback. Is my audio okay? I have this little lapel mic on. I think it's better with the lapel mic than just talking to the camera because I don't have to talk so loud. So 
So now I'm taking a Sigma Taper Blending E35 brush. I'm taking the shade Silk Cream and I'm blending all of those shades up a little bit further. This creates more of a diffused effect. I'm just taking this, <laughs> doesn't have a name on it, but it's a tapered blending brush. It's super fluffy. I believe it's by Beau Cassius. It's a French brand, I know that much. For being Canadian, you think I would know how to speak French better, but I don't. <laughs> Now I am taking my Morphe M506 brush and I'm dipping back into Mocha. This is going to deepen up the crease. I'm keeping it low. It's all about working back and forth with the colors, to be honest, to create a nice blend. I'm holding my brush at the bottom and I'm doing tiny little windshield wiper motions, not movements. I was made fun of for that one. <laughs> oh, this contrast makes my teeth look yellow. Uh-oh, they're not that yellow in life. Hmm, that's my only complaint. <laughs> it's all about going back and forth with your colors to create a seamless blend. So going back in with Pooter, as I'm saying that, on my Sigma E35 brush, just going over and up a little bit, doing little circular movements to blend out the inner corner, because so I have to be really careful. I don't want to take it in too far like I did with the original. I'm blending that wing out. Just taking that Morphe M433 brush with no additional product just to kind of blend over everything. And then going back in with this tapered blending brush with nothing else on it, just to diffuse everything. I'd say that's a pretty decent blend. Hell yeah, hell yeah, hell yeah. So now I'm taking a Morphe E36 brush and I am dipping into Central Park and I am deepening up my crease with it. Now using a Morphe M213, putting Central Perk on that to create my wing and bring that Central Park color into my inner corner a bit more in a more detailed form. Now I'm gonna bring Central Park down into a wing on the outer corner. like that. Now I'm picking out my M506 brush again with nothing else on it to blend that color up. Taking my M443, no, M433 with pooter on it. I'm gonna blend more in the inner corner and then go over everything else. I switched my brush again to the E35. I'm gonna be switching out throughout with all of the brushes just to create a seamless blend. So if I don't mention it, it's a brush that I previously used with a different color. I'll mention if there's any other product added to it. Picking up my M506 brush with mocha on it. I'm just trying to match this other eye a bit more by bringing everything up on the outer corner to create a higher wing. When you're blending darker colors, you hardly want to touch your brush like that to your eye. You don't want to be like, that makes sense. Otherwise, you're gonna pick up all of the product you just put down and it's gonna become muddy and patchy. And ain't nobody got time to fix that. <laughs> I think I'm gonna go on with black now. So dipping into Abyss, I'm gonna deepen out the outer corner. I'm taking this angled brush. It doesn't have a name, it came from Amazon. I'm gonna detail where my wing is. and bring that ever so lightly into the inner corner. This helps make this color, this helps make the cranberry color pop. <laughs> I was like, where'd all my brushes go? They're in, they're in my hand. Does anybody else do this? Does, does anybody else do this? Where they eventually all their brushes just end up in their hand and they're like feeling their desk for their brushes and they're like, where the f 
did my brush go? And it's, it's in your hand. Anyways, I'm gonna take the 213 brush I was using. I'm gonna use that to kind of lightly blend that black because I don't want to bring the black too high. So I have to be super careful once I lay it down. Now taking the M433, I'm just going to distinguish my wing with a makeup wipe, just so I know where to take everything. Taking my Sigma E45 brush, I'm just going to blend with Mocha and Central Park mixed together where that black is, just to diffuse it a little bit. Now taking my tapered blending brush again, just going over everything. It's all about blending. Pretty good, pretty good, pretty, pretty good. Pretty good. Inner corner kind of bugs me a bit. I need to drop all these. <laughs> Look at all my precious. I need to drop all the kids off. There we go. Okay, picking up my M506 by Morphe. I'm just gonna blend this inner corner a bit more. I don't even know what the last product I used on it. I don't have anything extra on it. I feel like this one is a lot more dramatic than this eye. Oh well. Okay. I'm ready to cut the crease. So just using a Sigma Lip L05 brush, I'm dipping into my eye primer I use to cut my crease. So the trick with cutting your crease is if you have eyelids like me where they fold in, I don't really, I wouldn't say I have hooded eyes, but they fold. So look up. Why don't I roll my eyes all the time? Look up and then you can kind of see where your crease needs to go at least. And that'll make it easier for you to draw and put shimmer without losing it. I'm even wearing the original shirt I had in that photo too. So it's kind of like, ooh girl. What I like to do to blend my eye primer out when I'm cutting my crease is use one of these spongy applicators that nobody likes to use, but it helps one, dry your primer off a little bit, two, get a little bit of the excess off, and three, it helps make this part a little bit more softer or blend it. It looks pretty damn even. Okay, taking a Luxie Precision 246 brush. I'm using this for my shimmer. So I'm dipping into Cran Apple and placing it on top of my primer. Such a pretty color. I love it. I love it. I love it. This eye look is literally the epitome. The epitome of fall. Smoky cranberries. Oh, I love cranberries. Does this eye look remind me of fall or like Halloween because of like the Joker or something? I don't know. So taking Central Park and a Morphe E36, I'm gonna diffuse it into the edge of my Cran Apple shade like that. And then I'm gonna take Abyss on that same brush and blend that into Central Park. Now I'm going back into Cran Apple. We're never done blending in this house. No, sir. No, sir, we're never done blending. Nice. So to make this shade pop a little bit more and to kind of clean it up, I know this is kind of backwards from what I would normally say to do, but I'm taking Abyss on this angled brush and I'm just bringing the black up a little bit higher because I kind of screwed up where I was going to be placing it, I guess you could say. So I just want to make sure everywhere where I want it to be and more. <laughs> Taking my M506 brush, just gonna go over that to kind of diffuse it. I'm gonna dip it into Central Park just a little bit. This eye is a lot smokier than the other one. <laughs> Shoot. Well, I guess I'm adding more smoke show to the other eye. You can always add, you know? You screw up, oh, whatever. You can always add more to your looks. Now I'm just gonna clean off my E45 brush on a claw and then go over that to diffuse it. Going back in with my Cran Apple brush. Gonna clean up where my crease was. I also have to do it on the other eye, which is kind of scary because I already have my lashes on. There, I think that looks good. That was a journey, guys. That was a journey. I don't know if I can do this part on camera. Forgive me if I can't do this on camera. I'm just taking a Marc Jacobs highliner br brush. <laughs> 
I'm just taking a Marc Jacobs highliner eye pencil in the shade black and I'm tight lining and then doing a wing as well. There's my tight line. <laughs> now I don't know if this is gonna work on camera. I do tug a little bit. I know you're not supposed to, but whatever. Now I'm taking a Sephora liner, angled liner brush. Just gonna clean up that line by kind of smudging it out like so. Just taking some liner off the pencil here and creating a more defined wing, even though it's already over black. Idiot. Don't worry too much about down here because you can always clean it up. I'm actually quite shocked how well I did that. Now just to match everything up, I'm going to take a bis on the same brush and just dab over where I put that liner on my lid. This deepens the liner, but it also helps it stay put all day long. I know I did this on my other eye, so I have to do it on this eye, so I'm taking a bis. Actually, just blending out that liner into the whole look on the outer bit. So the wing doesn't really show because your eyeliner is already winged anyway. Now taking my M506, just blending everything together again up here. All right, now I'm taking my makeup wipe and just cleaning everything up underneath the eyeball. Oh my god, like so, like that. Wow, I'm so smoky. <laughs> On to the next step. Taking this honker, this big old honker mascara by Tristique. It's called the Good Vibes Mascara. It's just a mascara, it's average. It's not anything that you have to run out and go and buy because it really doesn't matter what mascara you use when you're going to put lashes on. So next I'm going to be taking my Glam Cosmetics lashes in the style Smitten. Super cute lashes. These ones are the mink ones, but they now do offer synthetic lashes. You can use the code AMY20 to receive 20% off. It's not a commission code, so I don't make anything off of it, but it does save you guys money. I'm cheap and I just like to use my duo brush on lash glue. This one dries clear. I, I don't know if you can see this. I flip the lash upside down and so I'm just getting the band. A little bit of the lash too, whoops. If I do get it on the lash, I use my nail to push the glue into the band, but I can't really show you and do it at the same time, I don't think, no. It doesn't really work. You really don't need much glue to make them stick. Lashes just make everything so much better. I used to, in the original tutorial, I did not know how to apply eyelashes still, so my lash game was not very strong. But now I'd, I'd like to say that I do a pretty dang good job at putting my eyelashes on. I am going to go do my face off camera and I will be right back to finish the lower lash line and complete this look. Okay, so here is my base. I wanted all the color to be focused on the eyes, so I did a very soft face today. Now, let's finish this look up. So in the original, it looks like I did a smoky underneath with a red as well. So what I'm going to do is take a Aesthetica angled brush and take Central Park and drag it underneath, connecting it up to my wing. I'm only taking it about halfway underneath my eye though because I do want my eyes to be left open instead of small. I don't want it to be too harsh. Now I'm going to be taking my M506 blending brush and just diffusing that out a little bit on the lower lash line. Using a darker color underneath your eye and then using like a white or cream eyeliner in your waterline will really open up your eyes and make them look bigger. Especially with brown eyes, you have to be super careful because it's really easy to lose your eyes in a smoky eye. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take this Alamar flat shader brush and I'm gonna take the shade Abyss on it and tight line underneath my lash line. That way I have depth without adding a color to the waterline. Now if you have blue eyes, you could just do the Marc Jacobs or whatever eyeliner you want to use in your lower waterline and call it a day because that will brighten up your blue eyes. For me, I have to avoid that unless I want to make my eyes look smaller. Taking the M506 to blend. Cool, this is bringing me back, oh my god. Before I do the red, I'm going to line my 
water line. I'm gonna use a sponge to pull my liner down. I'm just using the NYX Jumbo Eye Pencil in Milk, and this will help brighten up and widen the eyes. See how like it just makes my eyes look bigger? <laughs> oh boy. Now I'm going to be taking the shade Crayon Apple on the same brush that I use on the upper and just focusing that on the inner portion but not all the way to the inner corner. Just for a pop on the lower lash line, nothing too crazy. Okay, so now I'm going to take a Sigma Short Shader E20 brush and I'm gonna dip into Beam and I'm just gonna touch up my inner corner highlight. I did highlight my eyes off camera, but that's what I'm using on my face mixed with the Pure Cosmetics Afterglow. I'm just kind of blending it into the red so it's diffused just a little bit. We're just gonna finish it off with a little bit of lower lash mascara just so it ties the look together. Okay, so this is the final look. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial on how to create a cranberry smoky eye. Perfect for the first week of what I classify as fall as soon as September 1st hits. I know that this is going up before September, but I just, I love fall so much that I just can't contain myself and I can't control myself when it comes to working with fall colors. So yeah, I love cranberry so much and black. I just love it all. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. If you vibe with me, make sure to subscribe to me down below. You can follow my Instagram and Twitter if you feel inclined as well. I just wanna say a big thank you for 100 subscribers. That is so cool. I can't wait to be like thanking you for 200 and 300 and on and on. So I hope our little family keeps growing because I do really enjoy making these videos every week. I hope you have a lovely morning, day, or night, wherever you may be, and I will see you next Thursday. Bye!